Now we have the loser bracket final. I need to update my things on the top. We have Yala Bingo against Outer Banks. We have Edegos, Espion, Lapras. We have a Lapras with Mew Dudrio going up against Cross and Talion, Blaziken, Clefable, and a Sylveon. <laughs> Can Potato keep up his Dudrio performance? Seems to be the only player today playing this uh, Pokemon. And Drill Pick as well is the nerf moveset, so usually when you see Dudrio, it kinda is Tri Attack and Jump Kick. But uh, Potato still rocking the Drill Pick. Gonna head over to the right side right here. Up against the Chicken. It's gonna score pretty much for free, of course. Nothing Torchic can really do about it. Let's bring back to the left side. Maybe we can take down this Clefable. I'm surprised Edigos doesn't really pressure the uh, Blaziken much more, but they're gonna try to take down. And again, six. Like, I mean, how do these teams not know by this by now? I feel like they should know, right? That this is going to happen. But I guess Clefairy dying for one stack is worth it. I assume. I guess it doesn't really matter, right? But I mean, Klaus knows about it. Klaus also picked an evolution out to match this, right? So no, they do know about it. I'm surprised they even go down and like they try to stack. Yes, Potato's gonna fall though, and they get a KO in. Never mind. Klaus does know about it, and he picked up a Mystical Sylveon as a counter to also just head towards top path very fast, and it results in a KO onto Potati. As he's gonna fall down, Ataria spawn is here. No Mystical Fire forward. Atari drew three very fast. Potato doesn't get quite level five yet. Neither for the Blaziken. Both stuck on level four. Let's see where Klaus is gonna go. Is he just gonna go back to his own jungle? Looks like he will do so. Heading down towards bot path. What do we have here? We have a Mew almost getting KO. Both are super low in HP. Landru's working for the KO. Onto maybe the Krasse. Once that 15 points go in. Or Lapras is Klaus gonna try to help out. Mav's gonna use the X speed to try and get away. Mystical Fire forward. Does Klaus have enough damage? Doesn't look like he has. As he takes a lot of return damage from Landru. Both of these won the Airs Cup last year together. Good times, eh? I was, I was there well, like, almost a year ago. Pretty much a year ago. London and Klaus won the Aeos Cup in Europe, where London subbed in for Tali Bobo Believers. Hard to believe it has been almost a year, right? That is, uh, that is why to think about. That has been almost a year since this has happened. Time does fly by pretty fast. Potato now. What level is he? Almost level 7. Jump kick is going to be there very soon. You also see Potato do a lot of this combo where he does a boost auto attack into jump kick into drill pack to close low distance. See if he's gonna do it on this fight maybe or he's just gonna go for the safe Ataria. Push back. He's gonna go for it. There's a drill pack landing. And doesn't want to overcommit too much. Up against three players. While well, this team is gonna make a play on bot, can they maybe go for 10? Stand the eject button to safety. Not quite level 7 yet, but this bunny should get him to level 7 any second. And there we go. Snipe shot secured. But saw the Muse again, putting in a lot of work for Landeru. As we head into the first Reggie fight on this Reggie Steel Crusher going in with the Rock Tomb. But they're taking so much damage from you as they just try to run them down. Tens now has to run. Passing it to the wall. Six, he's just barely not hitting. Italian with his Unite move. As I go for the Regis and gonna, gonna secure it. He's just gonna keep playing Espion, I guess, the entire time. Like the ball comes through, they pick up two KOs. Sylvian cross the foil. Yala Bingo now going to the school. 27, 22, and 36 points go in. Never mind, I think Mew took it away. As Potato also now putting head on top. He's three levels up on the Blaziken. Again, the top health player of Outer Banks struggling. Very, very much so. As we now have 165 to 2 points for Yala Bingo. That is a massive, massive lead. Potato going forward. Looking for 2 more points. Do some for the drill pack. Actually for the jump kick. Who's out attack. And Blaziken is down. They're going to break the second goal of the game. He's going to keep on pressuring. Then Potato is going to look for Yala Bingo. But he gets gravitated. And this is a classic Potato. Like he just goes for everything. He sees an opponent. And he's going to run at him. Straight up. He's just going to run at them every time he sees an opponent, and yeah, I mean, at some point, <laughs> he needs to be a bit more careful about it. <laughs> just a tiny bit. He wanted to look for a drill pick into Unite move. It could have, this is the thing though, right? On In this scenario, he dies, 
in another scenario, he gets a triple KO in the same moment, right? So, like... You know, in a different timeline, he got a triple KO there. In this timeline, he died. Oh, that's just how it goes. Let's see if we can look for an engage right here. If he looks, looks for the Unite move, they want to try and push this one in. No jump heads yet. Lapras looking for the fling, actually. There's the of going in as well. The drip pack onto the enemy Inteleon. As Potato tries to go for the KOs, look for the jump kick, drip pack onto Tans as Inteleon falls, Blazing can fall. It's, it's down to Klaus now. He's stuck. He can't make it back to the goal zone. He's going to get taken down. They break the goal on the second base. And we already have 300 points now for Yala Bingo. Yeah? That is a statement right here in the first match of the Susa Bracket Final. Definitely a statement. Where's Nouns? Nouns is out. They lost to Yala Bingo in the Bracket Quarterfinal. Nouns is gone. Now Regis is being started by Outer Banks. Can they actually go for this? The Solar Dream comes through of Landru. Landru is going to try to maybe see this away with an Electro Ball or something, but can't get in range. I think he switched to either Surf or Electro Ball right here. Looks like he has Surf on, so can't quite do much right now. As we have Lapras, popping up the Unite move, looking for the flank here, wave onto Tans, they're gonna try to spot out Inteleon, goes for a flank, goes for a wave, Ice Beam on the ground, the Fabian has to counter the Unite move, and Sixies though, he takes a side shot to the face and gets taken down, it's just the comeback chance for Outer Banks as they pick up two KOs, but now there's no all they can do really, as Mab's gonna return now, able to push them away from the goal, Ken and Blazik can make it out, Sylveon jumping forward, going for this Golovic being charged up, just in case anyone walks up, I can't really do much about it. And now Otter Banks just overstaying a tiny bit too much. Klaus is gonna fall to the boost attack of Mew. And the rest is gonna run. They sadly can't score a single point. They do get two KOs in the end. But of course, they need a bit more if they want to be successful in this match. As Potato. Getting closer and closer to that level 13. Level 13 of Dodrio is a very underrated level. I think a lot of people are not aware of it on how long it stuns. After landing, it stuns in an area and it's such a long stun. Potato's thinking maybe about Yunapuf right here, but it's very close again. If Potato Yunapuf right here, he's going to farm a lot to get his Yunapuf back up. So maybe this time he's a bit more patient about it, as I could have backfired in the semi-final earlier. Instead, Map is going to fall. It's still sticking around. Andrew doing a lot of damage. The pack is going to miss. Which like on top HP and this could go over to the side of Outer Banks now. Overheat, but no, Mew's gonna get it for Landeru. And now Blaziken is gonna fall. Punching his arms around. And falling down. Yeah, and now this push this one is pushing towards the enemy main base, but it's still 25 seconds before race spawn, so it should be quite easy to be, you know, defended. But Yala Bingo can get in position for Ray. And set up a flank. Yeah, they could, they could, they could do this toy grass and do this toy grass maybe. But instead, no, they actually go for the bottom Reggie, which is also still fine. So they're gonna get a bit more defense, special defense for this final stretch. There we go, secured. And now Marv is gonna walk forward. Let's see. Rayquaza set full HP. I mean, they need Ray. Outer Banks they need a good team fight win and Ray. And even that could not be enough, because they have to score 300 points. And we have seen, we've seen today that shields can get broken. And just because you get Ray doesn't mean you won. Klaus face shaking too much. The ice cream is going to land. Klaus taking so much HP. Has to run back to Clefable. As the snipe shots are flying out, there's the ice beam on the ground. The team fight's going to happen now, but oh no, the eject button is going to miss. Trust has to unite move now. As the fight's gonna slowly back out, Quake is gonna stun, but Krusty Knight's already down on Kuda now as Potato runs in with a full heal through the gravity. And Edgar's gonna fly up, it's gonna keep Potato quite, quite healthy. But so far we have Espion falling, so one for one, Potato getting chased away, Mystic Fire is gonna get Dude Rio, and he is going to fall. Another Ice on the ground, this team fight actually looking quite fine for Outer Banks as they also pick up two, two, two KOs, but they're running out of time. With one minute left, they need to somehow get Rayquaza, and they just don't have enough damage left. How are they gonna get damage in this fight? Rayquaza on top HP, Klaus is trying to burst down this ray, but the Mystic Fire will also just go on enemy Pokemon. Rayquaza is actually dropping low, but they're all just dropping towards the Lapras damage on the ground. Rayquaza on HP, and it's gonna go over to Marv, as Yala Bingo takes still a very dominant first game. Landeru with 147,000 damage.
on Mew. Oh my. We have Outer Banks now bringing out the Zora Comfey with Lucario, Trevenant, and Inteleon. Lucario, get yeah, oh, okay. Up against Elgos, Umbreon, Dodrio, Glaceon, and again, Sixies playing a surprisingly Espion. Hey! Can Outer Banks make it back into the series with their Zoroark and Comfey? Looks like quite a good game for it. They're up against Minog Umbreon, but Zorak is one of the few Pokemon who can dodge it more often than other Pokemon. I think it's even easier on mobile, and Klaus is a mobile player. So, because on Switch you have to like press on a button which has a lot of feedback, while on mobile it's just a button on the screen, right? So, this one's actually easy on phone, right? Think about it. Pressing Illusion for me look is definitely easier on phone than it is on Switch. All right, rotate running in, getting the first point in here right here, the first deck. And uh, but the next one goes over to Lucario, the last hit, and he's going to use the full here and run back towards the left side. As Potato gets the next last hit right here, and the next one right here. Probably getting a bit ahead again as this team just once again 60s, helps him out to get ahead in this lane. As now, let's look at uh, eyes on Zorak to see what Klaus can do. Because, I mean, this game all depends on Zorak, pretty much. Zorak is going to be the game deciding Pokemon for Outer Banks in this match. And... I mean, he has no right time against the Evolutions. Going to dash forward now, looking for the final fade attack. That's a lot of damage, but not enough to actually win this fight, as they actually lose more HP than Zorak did towards the opponents. Zorak now going back to jungle, Comfy already attaching. And again, we have the Lucario again, the Lucario of Outer Banks. So far, I have not been a fan of in the few times you have seen it being played by them. So, let's see what's going to look like this match. Nice drill pack there to secure the last hit. In Potatoes plays Pokemon, they do this. Like, he, he Dragon Rush Guard Shom does this. Blaze Kick on Cinderace does this. You know, Drill Pick Dodrio. And he only plays Pokemon, a superpower. He only plays Pokemon where you take a last hit and throw it to the left side. To like, to secure it. <laughs> That's the only thing he does. I mean, That's actually all top path Pokemon, kinda. I mean, I guess Blastoise does the same thing, right? It's actually kinda funny to think about. All these Pokemon just throw things towards the, the safe side on by Pokemon. Now Zorak is diving in, looking for the final fan attack, finds some to Blunru, and they're going to get two quick KOs right here. Trevenant barely gets away, as Six is going to try to chase him down. Finds a nice sword power by Klaus' dash maker, he's going to miss one of the faint attacks as the eject button comes through by Edugos. And turn in now, getting jumped on and taken down. Three KOs for Outer Banks. Actually, it wasn't eject button by Edugos, I think it just got missed. As Edugos actually has X speed and not eject button, so... And this is what Klaus needs. Starting off strong this game now at level 8 and a half. As Trevenant, I think a Spears are running down. It will be enough. And now again, Potato getting this lead on top that we have seen so far happen a lot in today, where he just gets a big lead over the other top path player. But again, it's thanks to Espeon ganking early on and supporting Potato very, very well. They just keep playing around it. But it's gonna break out now. Klaus is level 9. And our turn's already down. And our Klaus gonna dive in with a faint attack. They're gonna find one for a faint two. Klaus has to unite move. Can he get the red eyes? No. Yes, he can as well. I'm gonna dive back into the 60s. And they get four KOs. And the objective. Over to Outer Banks. There we go. There was a huge grass not landing. Let's send them down to set up for the Zora combo. As yes, Amino gets dodged away by Comfy hatching. And it's gonna be all down to what the Zorak can do this game, and so far, Comfy was actually in the United right here, they look for more fight, Eligos, 1 HP, Eligos, 1 HP, by the Galaxy Storm, but the fully is gonna be there, Klaus is dashing around, but he's still stuck in the mean look, and he's gonna finally be taken down, there's two KOs now, coming in for Yellow Bingo, as they can also break the goal, there's gonna be 40, 25, and 30 points, going to the bank, as they pull ahead in points. Back to top, we have Dodrio against Lucario for the Vigilecki. Down to up HP, Tense is around, but Dodrio looking for the Nightpool, finds a nice drip pack onto Tense, boost out attack, one more, and he gets it, cleanly done. And now Potato is looking for the Vigilecki up against Power Punch, he gets it! Before the Power Punch connects, and now he can also take down Lucario any moment now, jump kick across the wall. He's just waiting for it, into the drip pack. Does he have enough damage? Doesn't look like it, but Potato gets a KO into Inteleon, and also the Regilecki. 
Jumping for the next drill pack. This time it's gonna miss it, but Jump King's gonna connect and boost out attack. Lucario's gonna fall. He goes in. 40 points for the Dodrio. As he can fully stack as well now, if Cassie wasn't fully stacked yet. I can take a nice overcap, maybe. Oh, he's gonna take all of these points again, and he's gonna score another 40 on top of it. If Regilecki's in, Dodrio combines all of the scores into one instead of three at the same time, or like different, not at the same time. He combines all scores at the same time instead of three individual scores. So, yep, Regilecki helps you overcap on Dodrio. All right. Yeah, that is uh, a very strong Dodrio now. As we head into the next fight, we have three ends on the left side. We have five on the right side, but Potato's top lane. He doesn't want to join this fight, which I'm quite surprised by. Instead, he goes for another 37 points. Just wants to get ahead and points as much as possible because he knows that maybe they can't rip back farther if they get a huge point lead in. Isaac is spears up. He traveled it. It's enough damage. Even though Glaceon still does this much damage. Isaac is spears onto Klaus. He has nowhere to go. He's stuck inside of Minlo. He's going to take no look. Harry can't get the KO on Aedagos. And now Potato's here. Potato's going to flank. Tens goes down. Comfy goes down. Five KOs. Oh, yellow bingo. That's the auto secure. Not the objective, actually. The objective was still taken by Outer Banks. Oh my. <laughs> okay. I don't think he wanted to take the jump pad when he <laughs> it just happened. Oh god. Rich Lecky now. Next one on the menu for Yala Bingo. They could look for one more Unite move, move push here. So Dodri has Unite, Ambion has Unite, Glacier has Unite. They have three up against only one. Of course, they're not sure how many Unite moves Outer Banks has. But Tate's getting Power Punch right here. Close combat is going to miss. Snipe shot. Oh, it's going to hit with the lingering hitbox. But does Potato know about this? He dives in. He just goes in anyways, even with one HP. Can he get the kill on tens? Yes, they can. But he finally gets Power Punch. I don't think he saw the Snipe shot hit him. There's no way he was like, I'm going to go in on this little HP, but he does. I think he didn't know he got hit by it, but maybe he did. Who knows, it's Potato after all. Klaus goes in now, they're going to find one KO. Can Klaus find any more Isaac Spears? It's just so difficult to deal with for Zorak. As he gets taken down, Double can score 38 and 50 points. Glaceons are quite, quite scared to walk forward as Tens gets locked on by the Minook. Oh, this snipe shot insta quick scope is going to connect. And Landeru was trying to play for KDA instead of going for the 50 points. And in the end, it's going to cost them quite a lot. They miss out on 50 points as Tens now picks up level 14. Potato's going to score a few more points. Okay. <laughs> that's that's just the classic potato. <laughs> that is the classic one. Ridgy Rock on bot path. And Klaus is going to start working on it. I think for the mega overcap, yeah, but it was already so low anyways, I mean. I think Landru just, I don't know, I think he was too careful. Like, Landru didn't want to die there. Which, I mean, is fine, but, uh... I mean, he it got un he was unlucky. Getting hit by the quick scope, snipe shot is definitely... Like, he would have killed Intellion, right? So, Tens definitely got lucky there, hitting the quick snipe shot, which is RNG. It's a bit favored RNG still, but it's definitely RNG to hit a quick a quick, quick scope snipe shot. Um, so, otherwise, I think SP would have killed Inteleon and he would have scored the 50 points. But now Tens is level 15. Tens is level 15. As oh god, the Trevenant again. He just can't deal with the Isaac SP Glaceon. Next Isaac SP is a landing down. The current low HP. They already have to use Comfy Knights. Rock's diving in. They're gonna go for Rayquaza now. To reunite the stay on the ground. He's gonna get Rayquaza. Goes over to SP on. 60 secures the win for Yala Bingo as they move into the grand final to rematch for free from last month's grand final. And Alandro again with over 100,000 damage dead.